Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve a problem, minimum changes to make alternating binary string. Another easy problem for us today. We're given a string S, which consists only of zeros and ones, so it's a binary string. And we want to make it such that it is alternating, which means that every other character is going to be different. So it's gonna be zero, one, zero, one, or it could be one, zero, one, zero. So already we kind of notice that there's really only two possibilities. So even if we were trying to brute force this, it wouldn't really be an inefficient solution. So if we're given a string like this, zero, one, zero, zero, to make it alternating, we have pretty much two choices. We can either turn it into this or this. So we can kind of just look. Let's first consider if we were to change it into this string. Well, this is different. We'd have to swap this to a one. These are different. We'd have to swap this to a zero. These are also different. So we'd have to swap three characters. These are the same. So we don't do anything with that one. So we'd have to swap three characters to turn it into this string. Now, what about the other string up here? Well, these are the same. Don't have to do anything. These are the same. And these are the same. We'd only have to swap this and this. Well, not both of them. We'd only have to swap this one into this. Okay, so thinking of it in this way, you could probably code up the solution with one loop, or if you wanted to do it a simple way, you could even have two loops, one to check for this and one to check for the other. But did you kind of notice something when we were going through this? For the first string, if we were to make it alternating like this, we'd have to swap these three characters. If we were to make it the other string, we'd only have to swap this one. That's not a coincidence because notice that these two strings are the literal opposites of each other. This is opposite, this is opposite, this is opposite, and this is opposite. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is if we only check how many operations does it take for us to turn this string into this string, for example, like if it's starting with zero, how many operations would it take? We found it only takes one operation. Now we wanna ask how many operations does it take for this other string to turn it into this other string? Well, we already know that it's gonna be all the other characters. In other words, the length of this is four. It's gonna be four minus one character that we had to swap. So it's gonna be three characters for this other string. That's a pretty small optimization, so it's kind of just taking this from a two-pass solution into a one-pass solution, depending on how you code it up. I think you could code up it into one pass even if you were checking for both of these strings, but it's just a slight optimization. It's not a huge deal. I just thought it was worth mentioning because this problem is pretty easy anyway. If you can code up the clever solution I'm about to show you right now, you can probably code up the easier one as well. In terms of time complexity, it's gonna be big O of N. We do have to scan through every character in the string, but no extra space complexity that is going to be constant. Let's code this up. So I'm gonna have a variable which is count. It's gonna be zero, and this is gonna be the number of operations if S were to start with zero. And then when we return the result, we're not necessarily gonna return this count. What we would actually return is the minimum of this count and the other count, which is gonna be the length of the string minus this count, because that tells us how many operations if S were to start with one. So this is the return value. Only thing left for us to do now is actually compute the count. The easiest way to do it is one, just iterate over the string, obviously, but to check if the character at S of I should be a zero or a one, we could figure out a way to compare this to like the previous character or the next character, but the easiest way is knowing that at index zero, we expect the value to be zero. At index one, we expect the value to be one. At index two, we expect the value to be zero, et cetera, et cetera. The pattern here is that for even indices, we expect zero. For odd indices, we expect a one. So that's what I'm gonna use. That's the assumption I'm making. So for us to check, first of all, is this index even or odd? Modding i by two, this tells us it's odd. In the else case, we know the index is even. Now that we know that, we know that at an odd index, we expect the value to be a one. So if 
the value is not one, if it's actually equal to zero, then we know we should increment the count by one because we have to perform an operation here. I could put this in like an if statement, uh, increment this by one. But if you want to get kind of clever, you can combine these into like a ternary operator. So I'm going to do this. And in the else here, we'd add zero. So it's again, not like a big deal. You don't have to write it this way if you don't want to. I'm just kind of used to doing it this way. And in the else case, we're going to do pretty much the opposite here. So we'll add one, we have to make an operation if we were expecting a zero, but the character was actually a one. So this is the entire code. Let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.